And as you look around in this place where you are, tell me the first things that you see or you notice around you. I see a red barn and I'm on a farm around mountains, mountains, and uh, there's nothing else around. It's just all flat land. I just see a gate around the property that I'm in. And as you focus on yourself for a moment, do you feel male or female in this body? I am female. Mm-hmm. I have a long skirt on. Uh, I kind of look Amish. Yes. I have a bonnet on my head. Or like little house on the prairie type vibes. How old do you feel? Do you get a sense of an age? 32. Mm-hmm. And do you get a sense of holding anything in your hands? No, I don't have anything in my hands. I'm just standing in the dirt area. I'm looking for something. Mm-hmm. And as you connect even more deeply into the scene, what do you imagine it is that you're looking for? I'm waiting for my husband or my son to return. He's my son. And he's 16. He's a tall guy. And I'm waiting for him to come back in a carriage. I feel nervous. Do you get a sense of where he's coming back from? He's coming back from town, but it seems dangerous for him to go over there. So that's why I'm really uneasy and I'm waiting for him to come back. But no one's coming. Well, allow yourself to move forward a little in this scene and tell me what happens next. I'm just sitting inside the house now at the table and I'm just, I'm looking out the window, just constantly looking, feeling very panicked and stressed and I'm alone. And I finally see a carriage come up but it's not the one that I was expecting. It's like police or something or Mm -hmm. some type of authority back in that day. And what happens as this carriage arrives? What did they say to you? They're telling me my son was killed. They are I don't know why they don't like us. They're just like really abrupt and harsh about it. They just say, oh, your son was killed. And I'm crying and I fell to the ground and I'm really upset. Do they explain what happened to your son? Do they give you any more information? They said that he wasn't supposed to be there. He wasn't supposed to go into town for some reason. And um, like a bunch of guys like beat him up. They like were trying to get rid of him and they grabbed him and pulled him out of a general store that he was in. Um, They beat him and they killed him. I know that now, but they didn't tell me that. Then mm-hmm. they just said he wasn't supposed to be there. You know that. 
And so when you received this news that your son was killed, what kind of emotions are you feeling? Sadness, grief, loneliness. I don't know how I'm supposed to run this place without him. And I told him not to go, but we needed things. And he said he would be right back. And my husband is dead. So now I'm all alone there. I don't know. We're outcasts for some reason. They don't like us in town. I see like a. Oh, I see this person like me mm-hmm. hanging from a tree. I think I killed myself. Allow yourself to go to that very last moment where you take your very last breath in that life. And before you do, what's the final thought that runs through your mind? I have nothing left. They killed my son, my child. It was the most important thing to me. And I have no reason to stay here. And I want to go and be with him. And they're going to come for me anyways. And they're going to kill me in a worse way. So I'm going to do it myself. I'm just so grief stricken, just sobbing and sobbing. And I do it. So allow yourself to take your very last breath in that body, allowing your soul to simply come up and out of the body. And as it does, you can look back over this lifetime I want you to understand the purpose of living this life. What was the purpose of this life? They thought I was a witch. Purpose was trusting my gut because I knew. I knew that those people in town had bad intentions and I knew I had a feeling that something like this would happen, but I let my son sway me. We could have figured it out without going into town. It's just more convenient and we would have been more comfortable if we had those items we needed. So I had an inner knowing that we were going to be harmed, but I didn't listen to my gut. So I need to listen to my intuition. And what do you need to understand about that experience in that lifetime where your son's life was taken and you spent the rest of it alone? What was the lesson that you needed to learn there? I don't want to be alone. I love my family and I love being with them. And once they're gone, you have nothing. Even though now in this life, I try to isolate myself from them because I'm overwhelmed and I feel like they just take and take. But if they were gone... And I had all the time in the world to do whatever I wanted. I wouldn't want to because I just want them. So family is the most important thing over everything else. And in that life, I was incredibly lonely. And I'm not lonely now. 
but I need to remember how important they are. And they could be gone in a second too. It's tapping into that unconditional love and giving, even though I'm tired. They're the most important things to give to. I have fear that they're going to be harmed because of that life. Mm -hmm. And what do you need to understand about that? Is that experience going to play out again in this life? No, because I listen to my intuition now. And I can do that from a place not of fear, just of knowing. So if I just trust myself and my knowing, then I'll be fine. But if I lead with fear, then I will be miserable. And my kids are safe. No one will hurt them. Very good. So I want you to take yourself back to that life, back before you decided to take your own life and calling upon that divine light of source once again. I want you to bring it in with the intention of healing and strengthening that version of self that you were in that life. Seeing yourself become very strong, whole and complete within yourself, not allowing the fear of what others think about you to affect you in any way, standing strong in who you are, trusting completely your intuition and knowing that you have all of the answers deep within you. And as you call upon that light to cleanse and clear away all of those fears, worries, doubts, see yourself standing strong in your power and walk through that life now with the courage to face it all on your own. And tell me if you notice any shifts in that life. I, I see the noose hanging off the tree and I walk right past it and I go into a field of flowers and I just lay down and let the sun hit my face. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that you need to know or understand about this lifetime? Anything else that's affecting you? Just the fear of losing the people I love the most. My husband, my family, my kids. I can let that go. And just enjoy the time now. Because bad things will happen regardless, or if someone's meant to die, that's going to happen. But I sabotage the good times by worrying about things that haven't even happened yet and may not ever happen. So embrace, embrace the good times. Wonderful. Very, very good. Let's take a journey now onto that beautiful starship for healing. I want you to imagine that a portal begins to open up in front of you. And we're going to step through that portal, which acts as a stargate to take us on to the starship for healing. And once again, I'm going to count backwards from three to one. And as I do, 
we're going to step through that stargate and arrive at the ship. And you will be able to describe what it is that you see. Imagining that stargate opening with all of that powerful crystalline energy surrounding it. Beginning to step through and onto the other side in three, two, and one. And as you step through that portal, I want you to tell me what you see, what you notice. I'm back in the same room that I was last time. And there's a control panel box to my right. There are lots of buttons. And there's a TV screen right next to that. Right in front of me, there's the crystal healing bed. And there's another TV screen next to that. And uh, things are very sterile, just metal. And there's, there's not much in this room. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And as you look around in this room, Tell me if you notice if there's anyone else there with you or are you alone? No, you're with me. You're next to me. Wonderful. And is it just the two of us or is anyone else there? Just us. Okay, beautiful. And so I want you to lay down on that crystal healing bed and describe what's happening as you do that. Laying down now. It looks like it's, it's turning on. I can see the crystals lighting up beneath me. Describe those crystals for me as best that you can. So the bed, I'm laying on a glass flat top of the bed, and right below it are the crystals, and they look like amethyst crystals. They're all purple. Um, so they start as purple, and then once things start going, they're all different colors. Just a bunch of just vibrant pink, blue orange just like sparks of different colors are lighting up all around the bed i just see flashes of light coming through the crystals but i'm not feeling anything in my body yet i just see it them lighting up mm. and does it feel like there's just crystals below you does it feel like there's anything above you I don't feel anything above me. There's lights, but just regular overhead lights. I feel like all of the healing is below me. And the crystals. Wonderful. And as you look at those screens, those TV screens that are next to the bed, do you notice anything? on the screens. I see a picture of my body, just like, um, I guess like an x-ray of my body, mm -hmm. just standing up. So it's like a full body view. And I could see where my tumors are my spine, like I know, my left pelvis, my right pelvis. My shoulder. So those spots are just lighting up. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a it's just a, a spinning slow view of my body. On the other TV next to the control panel, that just shows like a, a, 
a constellation, like a, a star symbol. I don't really, I don't recognize it. Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can connect with that star symbol. I want you to connect very deeply, tapping into all of your deep inner knowing. What do you imagine that star symbol is used for? the star family that I belong to. Do you get a sense of which star family that's connected to? Syrian. Syrians? Mm -hmm. Yes. Syrians. And then it's changing. Pleiadians. I, I I feel like it's showing me all of these things because like anyone can come on this ship. So it's not exclusively for me. It's showing all the different star symbols. Mm. And as it shows you these star symbols, is that simply just a recognition of your connection with those star families? Or is there anything that these symbols help with? I think they provide different types of healing. So like one star family helps the most with the mind. The Pleiadians help the most with the body. Uh, another one helps the most with the heart. So I, th I think that screen is just always there. It's just always flashing the different star symbols. Mm. And does it feel like there's anything that we need to do with those star symbols today? Other than just be aware that they're there to get a sense of that. It's just showing that healing is for everyone. I am special, but I'm not special because <laughs> it's for, it's for everybody. Okay. Um, but I do see the door, the room has opened up and there's a little skinny hallway leading to another room and that's lit up. Hmm. So I kind of, I don't know if I should go in there. I feel like I should. Let's do that. You, we can come back to the bed. So just allow yourself to move into that hallway and tell me where it takes you. So it's all lit up and it looks like an operating room. They have a big overhead light. It looks like a surgery room to me. Mm -hmm. And there's shining light on the bed. I think they want me to lay on that. Okay. And so as you begin to lay down on that bed, describe this room the best you can. What does it look like to you? It's a big white room in the middle is a big chair. It looks like it looks similar to a dentist chair. And um, so my body's not laying completely flat. It's adjustable in that chair. And there's a big overhead light again. And all around the perimeter of the room. Uh, there's cabinets, a sink. It looks very much like a like a surgery, like a doctor's room. Mm -hmm. Some of the tools I don't recognize, though. Most of them I don't. It looks like a like a laser gun, like a purple laser gun, just laying there. Um, Allow yourself to connect with that laser gun. Just again, tapping into your complete inner knowing in this space. And what do you imagine that laser gun is used for? energy uh energy transmuter mm -hmm. it looks like it explodes the energy so like my tumor sites it would probably be used to just um 
make that energy explode. I'm getting really hot again. Very good. Just go ahead and take off those covers. And so yeah. as you look around the room, tell me what else you notice. Someone's here with me, helping me. I think you, you stood in the other room with the crystal bed. So now I'm laying in this dentist type chair mm -hmm. and someone is here. They're covered up. So I don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to connect with this being that's there with you. And tell me if you get a sense of who it is. I am a Pleiadian healer. I've come to help you transmute the energy. And oh, he's, they're taking that laser gun mm -hmm. all the way down my body. So they're starting at the top of my head, going down this. Yes. Is this a male or a female being? Do you get a sense of that? It feels like a male, mm -hmm. like a male dominant being. And um, I guess you could say that they kind of look like, he, he kind of looks like an alien, mm -hmm. bald, big eyes like bluish skin, mm -hmm. blue, gray, bluish skin, very yes. smooth, thin. Um, I'm not afraid at all. They're very nice. He's very yes. nice, like calming energy. Mm -hmm. He's just telling me like telepathically, I'm here to help. No, we didn't. So they're, they're trying not to scare me. So that's why they're not sending in so many at once. Yeah. It's just one-on-one -on -one to Wonderful. help me. So let's ask this being to describe what he's doing and how he's assisting you today. Transmutation of energy from earth and so there's like a big glass jar that he's sh like shooting the gun back into and it's dark energy and it's turning into like bright light orange and it's just it kind of looks like a lava lamp in there. Mm -hmm. And you can see the energy starts out dense at the very bottom and it's black. And in that, in that thing, it's going up to the top and it's orange, light orange, and it's circulating down. So they're, they're containing that energy that they're taking from my body. So it feels and like I they're taking the dark energy and putting it into that jar. -like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see the color changing lar uh, to a lighter orange which is a good thing. It's like a light, airy energy now. And um, so when they first put it in there, it was a black stagnant stuck at the bottom, but now it's lighter and it's moving all over the place, just like a lava lamp. Mm -hmm. What happens next? told me to close my eyes. And he's saying something over me, like a prayer or like a, I, I don't know what it is. It's a different language. And are you noticing any sensations as he's doing this work? I'm feeling really shaky in my body. Mm -hmm. 
So I, I was extremely hot. So I took off the covers. And now I'm feeling like a pulsating through all of my cells, through all of my body. And I'm cold. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of focus and repairing my heart. So it's taking some time. Mm -hmm. It's not instant. Yes. Um, so we're working on my shoulder. So like you put the little laser over my shoulder area and that is just like vibrating. You know, going on my heart. He's really working on my heart a lot. Just pulling all of that out, putting it into the jar. And that color is purple. So it's it's different types of that black energy is turning into different colors. It's not all, all orange. Mm -hmm. So right now there's orange, yellow, purple, and the lava lamp type thing. What happens to that energy once it turns, changes to the different colors is is he going to do something with that or what what happens to that energy it's love compassion honor it looks like they give it to the angels and that they pour that on us they pour that back into us so it's just complete transmutation of that dark energy mm -hmm. and does they it feel give like it back the angels are there with you now or does that happen at a later time that happens later he sends it up to the angels or delivers a cylinder to them but i don't feel like they're with me right now it's just me and him mm -hmm. and you're waiting in the other room with the crystal bed And so my heart's that. done. My heart's done. Now he's scanning down my body, checking all of my organs. Those look good. <laughs> so now he's at my hips. He says, Ooh, this is a big one. I think this is a lot of energy. <laughs> he looks tired. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh sweaty. <laughs> so now he has his gun. He's on my left hip. And just, uh, so yeah, I could see. So from the gun, I could see like a purple, like electric current going to my hip and it's just like holding on to that energy and it gets sucked right back up into that purple gun and so you feel like the energy is coming out of the gun but then it's also pulling the energy back in yeah and then he takes that gun and puts it in the cylinder and then it completely changes color and um, density I'm not feeling any physical sensations though right mm -hmm. now, except uh, I am. I'm feeling a little tugging on my hip area. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. And while he's working on that, do you have any connection specifically to this beat? Or is he just there on the ship to do this work? He's just on the ship. This is his job. Okay. They have um, different roles that they play on this ship. And he's a, a transmuter. Transmuter transfusion. Mm -hmm. So 
So I, so I see two other beings, but they're staying back again. They're trying not to scare me. I won't be scared. Mm-hmm. Okay, now they're coming in. <laughs> Wonderful. Tell me what they so look now, like. They look the same as him. Okay. They have uh, big eyes, bluish, grayish skin, tall and thin, bald. Um, so now there's three of them next to me. And they're, they're not there for no reason. They're not saying anything, but I know their, their presence is there for, um, they're also providing healing to me. Mm-hmm. And as you connect with all three of these beings, tell me what you sense that the other two, how are they helping? One is placing their hands on my head, healing the mind. And the other one has moved to the other side of my body and has their hand on my heart. And then the other guy is still doing the energy with the gun. Just say, calm down. (laughs) No need to worry. We're here. I say I worry too much. And they're just placing like healing hands on my head. To sort out my thoughts. I see a white flush of energy going through my mind and my brain. So there's there's parts of my brain that are stuck. So like the energy is trying to go through and it can't. So it's just pushing through. Their goal is to get all of that energy freely flowing through my mind so that I don't have any um, like roadblocks in my in my mind. They're clearing up my train of thought. Heal the mind, heal the body. Mm. Yes. I keep saying that they're scolding me in like a a really cute way. Like heal the mind, you heal the body. You know this. (laughs) They said I'm stubborn. What would they suggest that you do when that mind tries to take control? What do they say? They say, you can visit us more, you know. You can set the intention and come visit us. But you wait for Heather to bring you. Move the body. And all I have to do is set the intention before bed. I want to go to the healing ship or meditate. I need more patience for meditation. And breathe. So I'm feeling some sensations of my pelvis, Mm -hmm. not necessarily my tumor area, but I just feel energy running throughout my pelvis area. Yes. So all that, the healing, the mind and the rest of that energy looks like it's going down my legs. And they're going to just bring that gun and suck it out of my feet. The bottom of my feet. 
So it was like they did one more flush throughout my whole body. And the guy's still working on me with the gun. The laser. And where are the other two beings at this time? Are they still healing <laughs> they say, with you as well? <laughs> yeah, they're making jokes. They say, you need to dance more. Dancing's fun. And they're <laughs> dancing. They're moving around. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, I think they did their part. So now they're just like goofing around and they're telling me to... Um, be light and dance more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then. Oh, I feel bad for. The, <laughs> I feel bad for the one that's been getting all the energy out. He's tired. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think he's got it all. So now he's putting it in the glass jar. And we got blue, turquoise. Now there's lots of colors in there. Wow. And so that will be given to the angels and they will use that to infuse you back with all of those beautiful frequencies. Is that how that works? It did it doesn't look like that energy is just for me. It mm -hmm. just looks like they give it to the angels to use for oh, whoever okay. needs it. Oh, beautiful. It's not just specifically mine. Okay. So they've completely transmuted that and turned it into positive energy mm. and so tell um, me what happens next they're gone they left it's just me in that room now mm -hmm. and does it feel like you're complete in that room Yeah, I'm done in here. I'm not done completely, but I'm done in that room. Okay. And so does it feel like you're ready to move back to the crystal healing bed? Or do you get a sense of anywhere else that you need to go? So the crystal healing bed's to the right, mm -hmm. but to the left, the hallway has opened up again. Okay. Just a small little hallway. Uh, I'm going to go down there. Let's see. Yeah. Tell me where you go. It seems like a nature room. So th there's water. And it, it seems like I'm outside, but it's built inside. And I just hear like birds chirping and healing waters. Mm. Tell me more about this room. Just allow yourself to deeply connect with this room and the energy connecting with all of your inner knowing and tell me what this room is used for. I don't know. It seems like I'm supposed to go swimming in the water or get in it. It's more healing. It's all healing. Mm -hmm. so it's like a refresh. Yes. Allow yourself to get into that water and tell me what you experience. It's warm. It's calming. It's relaxing. So you could just swim around and I just hear birds and trees and it's just really peaceful. Butterflies. Just kind of everything beautiful is in here. It's not very big. The water is like a, like a small lake. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a bridge that goes over the lake. I'm just in that water. I'm by myself. No one's here. Mm -hmm. And so... Connect with that water because water has a consciousness. And as you connect with the consciousness of that beautiful water, 
Tell me how it's healing you, what it's doing. So taking the energy out depleted a lot of my energy inside my body. And it looks like there's like little gaps that were left from where the energy was sucked out. Mm -hmm. And this water is replenishing that energy that was lost. And it's filling up my cells with the healing water and healing energy. So it's just to make my body complete again because I was missing parts when they took it out. Wonderful. And does it feel like you need to completely submerge yourself in this water or does the water simply absorb into the body? How does that work? So my body's just absorbing it absorbing the water mm -hmm. and my cells are getting full so all of my cells look nice and plump now they look full of water where they were kind of dehydrated before they looked like prunes before uh -huh. and now the water they just like like big juicy water drops all of my cells look like that now um and i haven't dunked my head but i probably should mm -hmm. so i'm gonna do that okay It's weird because I'm underwater, but I don't feel like I have to hold my breath. I'm just like under there. Mm -hmm. Feels like you can breathe just fine. Yeah, there's no thought of if I can breathe or not. It just everything just works. Mm. So that's it. I just get a, an inner knowing <laughs> that I'm done in that area. Uh huh. Um, like I just feel full, so I'm like, okay, I can get out now. Like I just kind of know when I can get out. So wonderful. So tell me, tell me what you do next. So I'm getting out, and it, like right when I get out of the water, there's no drying with a towel or anything. I'm just kind of dry again. That's wow. really nice. Cause I was worried about wet clothes, how that would feel. Not on this <laughs> ship, right? <laughs> there I go worrying again. They told me not to. <laughs> like, stop it. We've got I it. Know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so out and there's nowhere else to go now. So now it's okay. like a dead end hallway. Mm -hmm. um, and I can go past the room that I was in where they were working on me. Yeah. And now I'm back in the crystal room. And... You were there waiting for me patiently, sitting on a chair. Mm -hmm. And um, so I need to lay back on the bed again. Okay. And tell me okay. what happens as you lay down. So I'm laying down and um, the bed starting up again. I could see the crystal starting to light up again. Mm -hmm. Um. I just need a couple seconds. I just want to see if I could tap in and like feel it working. Yes. Tell me what you feel or what you sense. I just feel my body tingling with the energy. Very, very slight vibration throughout my body, I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. I feel it a lot in my hands. And so as we connect in with this crystal healing bed, tell me if you get a sense of what all this bed can do. What is the purpose of this bed? This bed can heal anything. I see it like fixing bones, chicken pox for some reason. Um, 
cancer, depression, skin problems, eczema, arthritis, can make your bones strong. Eyesight. There's really no limit to what the bed can do. Mm -hmm. The bed can heal almost anything, the mind, the body. It can help heal your soul. The water is the best for the soul, though. And so is it the crystals within the bed that's doing the healing? Or how does that technology work to get a sense of that? It's not just the crystals working on its own. There's an energy beneath the crystals and the crystals magnify and project that energy out. So So I don't know how the energy gets there though. It looks like they bring the energy to the crystal bed. Like they fill it up every now and then. Mm -hmm. And do you get a sense of where they bring this energy in from? Is it a special kind of energy? It sources energy. It seems like the angels give them this energy too. So it seems like they trade that energy back and forth. They give them the new one that's been transmuted or transfused. They give that to the angels. And then the angels also send down this healing energy that they put into the crystal beds. Mm. And that so, comes from source. And so then the crystals... They amplify that energy and they direct that into the body for healing. Yeah, the crystals absorb that energy, amplify it, and then send out that projection to the body through the, the glass bed that I'm laying on. Mm -hmm. And so is that done by the crystals? Do the crystals know where the healing is needed? Or is that something? that is asked for? How does the bed work? So, so we can ask for what we want, but the crystals also target weak areas in the body and help heal those. So it's just all the energies going throughout your entire body. And it's just, it doesn't hurt anything that doesn't need healing but it pinpoints those areas that do need healing. But if you tell them specifically, so I want cancer to be healed in my body and I want stagnant energy to be removed out of my body, then they make that the primary focus while also looking for other things. But most of the energy is now going towards those cancer cells for me. But I've had... Um, so they healed my wrist mm -hmm. that I had an injury on. Um, Just now it feels like that happened. That actually happened last time. Okay. But they're reminding me and they're showing me that when I was laying on the bed, they were targeting my cells, but they also completely repaired my wrist because that needed it too. <laughs> um, also. Um, Yeah, like they can heal like cavities, like in your mouth. Um, they could do just like anything. 
So they're directing it all over the body. Even like things from like, you know, like pregnancy, like leftover issues. Like I had my ovaries removed. That was not from pregnancy, but I had my ovaries removed and the doctor um, like made the knot too tight inside. Mm -hmm. So they just like loosen that a little bit for me. Oh, wow. So I don't have any discomfort anymore. So as this bed is working on you, let's first first focus on the cancer in your body. Allow yourself to connect and understand how this bed is working to release this cancer. Tell me what's happening. They're breaking it down into tiny, tiny like bits, like microscopic bits, so that I can pass it through my body too. So they're telling me that I need to hydrate a lot, drink a lot, a lot of water, and it helps flush all of this out. So they pull out as much as they can, but then they also break it up into tiny little bits so that I can pass it through my body to get it out. Mm. And so this work, we've done this work twice now. Is this work today going to complete the process of clearing that cancer or will there still be more work to be done? I don't feel like they're going to take it all. Mm -hmm. So what do they want you to know about that? What is the reason and what do you need to do? to finish that releasing process. I have to release. I've been releasing. I, <laughs> uh, what else specifically do you need to release? <laughs> they really want me to learn a lesson. So they're like <laughs> letting me know like, hey, you're not going to die. We're helping the majority of it, but you need to do the rest. And it's just releasing control, releasing the mind. I feel like they're thinking that I'm going to fall back into old patterns of thinking. Mm -hmm. And like, if they just heal me, I'm not going to learn my lesson type of thing. Yeah, that's true. Um. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating, but I understand. Yeah, so that you never go backwards. You yeah, learn they're like, that. yeah, they're like, you've made incredible progress, but you're not there yet. Yeah. So let's just set the intention today that this bed provides you with as much healing and releasing of these cancer cells, giving you as much as you need to just have to do that little bit of extra releasing, to clear that completely out of the body. They really want me to sh come or show up on my own. Okay. Um, yeah, they and want me to take the time to bring myself. Let's just ask them once again, I know they've already told you a little bit, but exactly what does she need to do to bring herself on the ship? Is it simply at night before bed? Would it be more beneficial to do it during the day in meditation? What do they suggest? I'm doing good at night, calling in my healing angels and the guided meditations that I do at night, but they want me to do it more on a conscious level during the day. They're trying to show me how powerful my mind is and that I can do this myself and release the self-doubt or think that I'm not doing it right. They really want me to hone in on my mind and the power of the mind to get myself on the ship. They said there's the healing ship, there's healing temples that I can go to. 
but I'm not trying to go there on my own because I don't have the patience. They're teaching me patience. It's a big so, lesson. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's not my strong suit. They know it. There's yeah. no hiding from them. <laughs> you can't lie to them. <laughs> So, so meditation, yeah. Yeah. So let's connect back with the bed. So we're working on the cancer cells. We have already released some stagnant energy. And I know one of the things that you said is that the doctors have wanted to give you medication for the bones. So let's have the bed check the bones and let us know if there's anything that needs to be healed with that today. The bones are very strong. My healing angels keep the bones strong every night. So that's good. I don't need bone strengthening medication. They're they're completely fine. And um, so, since I've been doing all of this stuff, the cancer has stopped. It's not eating at my body or anything like that. It's really just like whatever tumors are there, are there, getting smaller, but they're not growing or becoming any more invasive in my body. So my bones are strong. Wonderful. And tell me what else the bed is finding with you. What other areas are being worked on at this time? Oh, they're helping. Um, so I have metal expanders in my body um, for my breast reconstruction. And it's very, very painful. Um, I just have like plastic jamming into my armpit at all times. And they're helping push that down a little bit. And um, help. they're helping with some of the scar tissue in my breast that had radiation done because uh, that did a number on me. So they're helping ease some of that discomfort I feel in my chest. Wonderful. And are you able to feel that as they do that work at all? Definitely not noticing. Yeah, it still feels pretty tough to me. Mm -hmm. I'm just scanning my body, see if they're working on anything else. Okay. My left pelvis is what always has the most discomfort. So I feel a lot of tingling and I definitely feel something happening on that side of my body. Um, below that, my body's completely fine. So the focus is my pelvis area. And I just feel very cold again. Mm -hmm. So my temperature has been changing throughout this time. Yes. And let's ask what, what is happening with the temperature changes? Is that simply the energies that you're receiving or what creates that? It's a different vibrations of healing. So the different levels, they, they're like cranking it up and then they bring it back down. So it's not so hard on my body. Mm -hmm. The cooling is like a flush of, um, I don't know, like to calm my cells and my body down so I don't get too worked up. Mm -hmm. It feels like the heat is actually like the thing that's doing something, the heat is getting rid of things. And then the coldness is a cooling sensation they're, they're sending through my body. So I don't get, um, like my cells and my body doesn't get aggravated. Mm -hmm. 
And so I know I'm there with you. Am I participating in this? Am I simply observing? Do you get a sense of that? You're observing. You're just waiting for me. I feel like you can go you can go down the hallway too if you want to take a look. Mm -hmm. Um because I think you thought that you had a stay just in the crystal room. <laughs> but you can you can come too. I see the hallways open and the doors are open for you too. So mm -hmm. uh there you go. You're going to take a look. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'll be back. <laughs> I, I love that you can see that. I can't. <laughs> I will take your word for it. <laughs> you have armor every time I see you. You're in like your metal armor. Really? Uh, every time. Yeah. Wow. I'm going into battle, I guess. <laughs> You're always ready. <laughs> do I, do uh, I look, do I look similar to what I do here or do I look different? No, you look the same. You're beautiful. Okay. Oh, you look just well, like you. you do now. You have, um, yeah, you look the same to me. Okay. I look very different in this, in this world when I wear oh. my armor. Tell me what I you have, look like. I have like really long hair, um, really nice hair, which is funny because in this life, I always want straight hair mm -hmm. and I haven't had that. But in, in that version of myself, I do. Uh, it's maybe like, that's where it comes from. Yeah. <laughs> I think I my hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's it. You're always very happy when I see you here. You're smiling. You're just like, um, <sighs> You just have a knowing about you. Like you're very, very comfortable in this in this world. But I don't think you've been in these rooms before. Mm. Um, does, this feel, does this feel like um, the, the ship that we were on last time? Or do you get a sense of it being a different one? Oh, no, it's the same ship. Same ship. The crystal room is exactly the same. But those other two rooms were not open to me last time we came here. Oh, okay. It the it was just one room and there was no hallway. Mm. But um, they opened for me this time. And does this feel like the ship that I'm normally on? Or does this feel like maybe we are using a different ship for your healing? Uh, hmm. It seems like the same ship, but it's a huge ship and there's just different areas to it. Okay. So we're in just like a very small designated corner, mm -hmm. but there's so much to it. Mm. And mm, it looks like a lot of different beings come to this ship. So maybe that's why they were showing me those, those different star family type things mm -hmm. because they welcome like everybody to this ship for healing, for knowledge, um, training. Yes. <clears throat> Different things go on here. Mm -hmm. And you're back. <laughs> <laughs> and did I enjoy myself? Did I get any healing? That's what. <laughs> <laughs> No, you just looked. I so need to send cool. myself down and get in that chair. <laughs> <I feel like. laughs> You'll be supercharged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I feel good. I feel like I'm done. Mm -hmm. Feels complete. Let's yeah. just ask, is there any additional healing that Samantha needs today? No, I just need to drink a lot of water, okay. even more than normal the next few days, week. Make sure I get everything all flushed out. Wonderful. And so before we exit the ship, let's just ask if there are any additional areas that we can see today. Anything else they can show us before we go?
all areas of the ship. Mm. No. <laughs> I tried to walk down and no, they won't open it. They said not today. <laughs> yeah, no. I went to a dead end hallway. Okay. Well, we tried, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. So just allow yourself to come up off of that bed. Tell me when you feel like you're back on the ground. Yes, I'm here. And is there anything else that we need to know before we go and to connect back with the higher self? Oh, I just hear in my head, come back anytime. They want me to really try to use my mind and break myself back. Wonderful. Well, we would just like to thank the beings who assisted today in this healing. We are so grateful and so grateful to get to experience the ship today. And so I want you to imagine another portal opening up and you and I are going to step through that portal and we're going to arrive back here on earth in three, two, and one, stepping through the portal and imagining yourself arriving back here now. And as we arrive back here on earth, we're going to bring forward your beautiful guides and your higher self to help answer the rest of your questions. And so as we've done quite a bit of healing today, what else does Samantha need to know or understand about her cancer, releasing that energy? and becoming the healthiest version that she can be. She needs to remember who she is. Almighty and powerful and wise. She needs to trust her soul. Once she trusts herself, she will be unstoppable. It's all in the mind now. The physical body is healed if she lets it. Wonderful. And any additional information that you can give her to really help her get her mind and her thoughts under control so she can finish that healing and move forward. Make time for yourself to do what you love, but make time for rest. Right now is a time for rest. Sleep as much as you can. Lay around as much as you can, even though you don't like to. Rest. She wants to be done with the medical industry. She has been through a lot. She's ready to begin to disconnect from the cancer center. Can she begin to do that after her reconstruction surgery is complete? Yes. Once her surgery is complete, she will no longer need 
those doctors or periodic scans. Waiting for a scan keeps her in fear. And she has no reason to fear. She is already healed. She needs to continue to send healing light. Get her vibration as high as possible. Live in joy. Enjoy her children and her husband. And get excited for all that is to come. Wonderful. She wonders if her doctor is going to give her a hard time since she has started going against her medical advice. How does she work with her doctor while she's still in this process? They will think she's crazy for her choices, but that's okay because she knows the truth. They have been indoctrinated to believe that their way is the only way to heal this energy. And that's okay. But ultimately, it is her body and she will make the decision and that decision will be respected. She will stand firm and stand true in her choices. She will be okay. She wonders if everyone can heal themselves from cancer like she is, or do some come to experience this disease and to actually die from it? Can you help her to understand that? Many can heal the way she has healed, but not all. Some are repaying debts. Some are learning for their soul. And some have different missions than her. So many can heal, but not all. Some it's their destiny. And she has an upcoming surgery. How can she heal from that really quickly? What, what does she need to do? She's already doing it. Keep doing what you're doing. Call in your healing angels every night. Or even just during the day, call them. Send healing light through your body while you sleep. Eat good food, nutritious food. Water. And allow the energy to flow through your body. You will heal. You will see. You'll heal much faster than your last surgery by incorporating these things. Her body is miraculous. Wonderful. 
how can she find more joy and to get back to a childlike nature? She says, she's way too serious all the time. Her spirit was crushed a little bit as a child. And she was told many times that she needs to be serious, not be silly. And luckily her soul radiates joy still. So there is a piece of her that is held back. Releasing all of those childhood traumas and wounds. That will help her live more freely in joy. So more, more self-work, work, and healing the inner child. And she'll find her joy again. Very good. She wants to know about her Aunt Floor. If she crossed over into the light after she passed, help her to know if Aunt Floor is on the other side. She was a little bit confused when she came out of her body and she was looking around for a moment, but she went to the light. She's okay. She's continuing on her journey. Wonderful. Are there any messages from Aunt Flora today? You're doing great, Sammy. Don't worry about me. I'm happy. I'm at peace now. I'm rooting for you. Wonderful. Very good. Are there any final messages today? Anything else you'd like to share? Don't worry. Slide down the hill. That's all you have to do. You've already climbed the mountain. You've done the worst part. And now you're trying to stay at the top of the mountain instead of coming down to the beauty that's awaiting you. Stop resisting. Let life flow the way it should. You cannot interfere in anyone's journey. Your children are on their own journey. Your husband's on his own journey. And your family's on their own journey. Just let go of control. The world is not on your shoulders, even though it feels that way. Once you learn to just worry about yourself, all of those heavy feelings will be released at once. You have beautiful things on the horizon. Wonderful. Very good. Very good. I just like to thank all of the beautiful beings that were here assisting us in today's session. We are so very grateful.